How's it going gamers? Chongo here and today I've got a gameplay commentary for you guys and the gameplay is of Guild Wars 2. I've been playing that quite a bit and basically my topic for today's commentary is pretty much going to be about the subscription base for games uh, online and MMOs and all that kind of stuff. So let's get into it. Now first off I basically want to say that in my opinion subscription based games are dying because there are so many good games that get released but you automatically get turned off from because of their subscription thing whether it be $15 a month or $10 a month whatever it is. Like for example, the the Secret World was recently released, and I was actually sort of interested in that game and had been waiting years to play it. And I did get in the beta, and it was an all right game. But immediately, once I realised that I'd have to pay sixty bucks or fifty bucks for the game plus pay monthly, that immediately turned me off it. Even though it probably would be a game that I would play if it was just the fifty dollar fee for it, or in, in actual fact just the subscription fee. But those together automatically sort of. I don't know, it just turns me off it immediately. I'm not sure how many other people get this, but I've got a feeling some people sort of have sort of a thing like it, the game has to be very progressive and that kind of stuff if you're willing to pay for the monthly fee as well as buy the game out itself. Now also just saying another thing about the Secret World MMO, it sort of dipped and yeah, it didn't sell anywhere near as much as they predicted and Funcom has now gone and fired, I think it was 50 or 60% of the workforce that was actually working on the game. And when you think about something like that for a game that was kind of good, it seems to me that if they had just gone with either just the subscription fee or just the $50 payment or $60 payment, I, I think they might have actually survived a bit better and not done as many updates or released DLC or something like that but the subscription fee as I said it's kind of a weird thing especially towards the beginning of a game because you're not really sure about how much DLC they're supposedly going to release and recently there have been many other studios that have had to have fire staff just because that their game or MMO didn't sell anywhere near as many as they thought like for example Star Wars The Old Republic they had to fight Bioware had to fire some staff from that just because they had thought it would continue on its standard but it seems like the sub base of it has decreased this could be because of like the Secret World being released or Guild Wars 2 or any number of reasons but it just sort of to me reiterates the fact that if you're going to get a sub fee you need to add a lot of extra content or something that's going to keep the user there because otherwise it sort of seems a bit weird why you'd be paying monthly for a game that isn't really adding a whole bunch of new features. Now moving on to a slightly older MMO that I had already planned on getting but by playing the beta itself kind of turned me off it as well would be APB. Before it was APB reloaded and relaunched as free to play it was actually going to be a subscription based model and pretty much the studio died by trying to launch APB and I, I think I can remember back some people weren't going to get their money back and all this kind of stuff just because they thought APB would be extremely popular and it wasn't and I, I personally think that's because of a number of reasons because there were still glitches in the game when they launched it like I played the beta until I think it was the last day before the game was actually released and there were still glitches in the game present and even now two years after the company has died and it's been brought back to life as a free to play as well as having microtransactions there are still some of the same glitches I saw three years ago while playing the beta so it, it seems a bit weird that they thought people would want to buy this game as well as pay for a subscription for a game that didn't really feel completely polished I still think some people would be willing to pay for the game as well as a monthly fee if the game was good enough, but for me they need to push over a line and make it such an epic game that I'm 100% willing to pay for the game as well as pay monthly, which I actually never have been for with a game before. I have paid monthly for games that you don't actually have to buy the game outright, it's just like a little subscription thing, which I still think is a good market and I think that some of these other MMOs probably wouldn't be able to move into markets like that, like for example Star Wars The Old Republic couldn't really move into that from the start because of how much employees they basically had making this game, they wouldn't be able to return a profit from something like that. So anyway, this brings me to Guild Wars 2, which is a really awesome MMO that you pretty much just buy the game and that is it. You do not need to pay any subscription fees or anything like that, although there is cosmetics and all that kind of stuff that you can buy to have like extra bank slots with actual microtransactions, which originally I thought that was a bit weird, but as I've learned that you can actually transfer in-game gold for gems which are, you can buy real money for, I thought that was an awesome idea instead of completely separating the two markets. But anyway, I've been playing this game quite a bit. It's definitely a good game. If you're looking for like a free MMO once you've actually bought the game, I would definitely recommend this game. So anyway, that sort of brings me to the end of my commentary. If you'd liked it, give it a like. And if you've got any comments on subscription fees with games, I'd like to hear what you think. So put them below. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.